What is up YouTube? It's your boy Kendrick Youngblood. I got a really awesome story for y'all, but before we get into that, I just wanted to showcase some merch I got from watching Brandon Leak perform live. Honestly, going to that performance was probably one of the best decisions I've ever made, but this is specifically about how my college slam team got fourth place in the nation, all right? So in case y'all didn't know, I'm a student at the University of Houston and the poetry slam community at UH is called UH Coog Slam, all right? So that was the name of my team. This organization began in 2018 and just a year later, we won fourth out of 58 teams in the College Union Poetry Slam Invitational. Cupsy, really crazy how in just a year of existing and in our very first competition, we made it to final stage, right? Here's pretty much the story of how we did it. So starting off with how members joined, uh, the two captains, because there were two captains for the team, Muhammad and Jazib had automatic spots in the team, which means the remaining three spots on the team had to actually be earned by UH students signing up to compete for those top three spots. The top two competitors who didn't score high enough to get a spot on the team would end up being alternates for the team. Y'all feel me? Or substitutes, I guess you could say. The other team members who earned a spot on the team were Eris, Wasik, and I. And then the two competitors who acquired the alternate positions were Angel and Sufjan. Now for Sufjan, I don't know if he maintained his position as an alternate due to his responsibilities as an officer in the organization. Yo, so as I was editing the video, I realized there was something very important that I forgot. Out of all of us on the team, arguably, Angel was was the most consistent, all right? And that really set the tone for the rest of us because as an alternate, she didn't know for sure if she was ever gonna need to substitute for one of us and come on stage and perform on behalf of us. But at the end of the day, she was always at practice. She was the first there and the last to leave. And that really kept us on our toes. You know what I'm saying? That set the standard for the rest of us on how serious we were taking Cupsy. And honestly, I can't thank her enough for that. So I just wanted to add that. We had a coach in RJ and an assistant coach in Jackson. RJ is a really awesome Houston based poet. Probably one of the best poets in Houston. Like, man, that guy's just Mind blowing, you know, y'all know what I'm saying? Like one day I'm gonna react to one of his poems on YouTube so y'all can see what I'm talking about. And then Jackson was the Youth Poet Laureate for Houston. So <laughs> we were in good company as a team, y'all feel me? <laughs> now as for our first meeting as a team, this was arguably the most important meeting we had throughout our entire time together. In this meeting, Jackson asked each and every one of us, what are your goals? What do you want out of this experience competing in Cupsy? Every single one of us had the goal of winning. We all really wanted to win. Of course, at the end of the day, the journey is what matters most, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, no, we know that, obviously, and we're not gonna be sore losers if we lose, which, you know, we did. But, <laughs> but yeah, like, we had a really strong, adamant desire to win. And that's something that really set the stage for us throughout all of our practices, which I'll get into in a second. The training schedule is quite simple. Usually we had practice three to four times a week, usually three, but every now and then four. Uh, originally we had three hour practices, but as Cupsy drew closer and closer, the hours of practice began to increase and increase and increase until finally we were practicing for six hours, nonstop. It, <laughs> it was crazy. We often began each practice with vocal exercises, breathing exercises, and facial massages. And they were often led by either Muhammad or Jackson. We often received homework in the form of writing prompts. We also had writing times during practice. We would allocate a certain amount of time in which we could like actually create new pieces. Our drafts during the writing times were not polished by any means. We'd end up giving these drafts to RJ and Jackson and they would provide feedback and things for us to consider, some suggestions, and then they give it back to us and we would improve the poems. The writing times ultimately culminated in about 16 poems that we had to work with going into Cupsy, though about two or three we likely weren't going to use, but we just had in our pockets just in case, y'all feel me? Poems were meant to be two minutes and 50 seconds maximum. And the reason for that is the time limit when it comes to Cupsy is three minutes and 10 seconds. So if we were ever to drop our poem or forget our lines and stumble on our words and stuff like that, we would still have enough like enough of a grace period to you know finish it on time without losing points because the further you get beyond the time limit the more points you lose so keep that in mind now we are going to get into the drills rj pretty much trained us like a drill sergeant in a lot of ways i'll get into that in a second whether it be in the uh theater building in his apartment in the library in the student center outside no matter when or where, we'd go through a set of drills that he had assigned for us, all right? So the first and most basic of all of them was pretty much the Italians. And what Italians are is when you go through a speedy run-through of your poems, if 
if you by any chance accidentally stumble on your words or make a mistake, you have to start over and then like go through a speedy run through once again until you finally get through the whole thing without making a mistake. Really simple, really annoying. All right, but those are the Italians. We'd have to do wall sits as we recited Italians. We'd have to do planks as we recited Italians. And we even had to do simultaneous indies or individual poems. When I say simultaneous, I mean, I would be performing my individual poem in front of somebody else as they're performing their individual poem, which is very distracting because they're making facial expressions and saying words, but you have to focus on the words in your head and recite them as well. The point is he was trying to establish the most stressful of situations for us to recite our poems in so that no matter what, when we went on stage, we wouldn't drop the poem. Mind you, sometimes when we were reciting our poems, he would even try to distract us occasionally. You know what I'm saying? Trying to make sure that no matter what, because you know, sometimes the crowd is gonna be like really enjoying our poem and like getting all hype and stuff. And it might be very easy to like lose track of your words and stuff. So all of these uh, stressful little tactics he did went a long way in making sure we got to final stage, all right? He also had group piece recitation drills. Um, group pieces is when multiple teammates recite a poem together, all right? and the drill he had for that was really annoying, but he really <laughs> loved to use it, all right? And what he would make us do is he'd have teammates who were performing a poem together, uh, recite it like normal, except he would stop someone who was in the middle of their lines and tell another teammate to finish that person's lines. You know what I'm saying? And the reason for this, which is very smart now that I think about it, is to make sure that in the off chance that one of our teammates drops their lines, uh, you can pick up where they left off and continue the momentum as if nothing ever happened. Or even if it's noticeable, it's not so bad that there's gonna be just silence. You know, that's gonna be really awkward for both the audience, the judges. Another drill he had us do is he would make us stand side by side and recite our poems, right? He, he'd point at, let's say, he'd point at Jazib and be like, all right, well, start your poem. And he'd start spitting it, he'd start spitting it. He'd tell Jazib to stop, he'd point at me and he'd be like, start your poem. All right, so I'd start spitting. He'd go back to Jazib, continue where he left off. And Jazib would have to continue where he left off. Uh, then he'd point out Eris and say, perform at the same time as Jazib. So both of them are performing. And after that, he goes to Muhammad. He's like, all right, you go, you two stop. And that's pretty much how it continued. And no matter when he told you to stop, you had to know where to continue. Like that one was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Surprisingly, I wasn't that bad at that drill. But like, man, that was really intense. <laughs> Another thing we would do is watch performances on Right About Now's YouTube channel. I should have probably mentioned this earlier. Right About Now was tasked with filming the whole Cupsy tournament. So if you actually wanna watch some of our performances, just go to Right About Now and you can see them. I'll link uh, some of the other performances we did in the description, so y'all can definitely check that out. But yeah, sometimes we would watch performances in order to get an idea of what is good wordplay, good punchlines, good storytelling, and most importantly, good choreography. And by choreography, I don't just mean like throwing your hands everywhere and stuff, I mean like emoting as well, making sure you are getting the emotions across to the audience. On top of that, RJ invited phenomenal poets to work with us and instruct us on how to improve our performances. I'm talking Ebony Stewart, Black Chakra, Bill Moran. I don't know what we did to deserve all that help. And mind you, we didn't just have our own little, you know, practice in our corner. No, 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 we, we performed an actual slam. RJ would take us to Right About Now, held at Avant Garden in Houston, Texas, and we would have to, you know, actually compete using our poems that we had written for Cupsy. He didn't only take us to slams, of course, he also took us to open mics. And yeah, these were pretty fun too. We had an audience as well, we just weren't being judged. But yeah, this was also a really good experience for being on a stage and performing our indies and stuff like that. So this real world experience could have possibly been the deciding factor between like us getting fourth place on final stage and us like not even making it past prelims. One of RJ's favorite sayings was, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. And what he pretty much meant by that is, if we ever went into a certain slam, say at right about now, or even a practice session, and he gave us an order of poems to perform, right? At any point, he can change the order and say, okay, I know I said I wanted Muhammad to do this poem, but instead, Muhammad, you're not going up. Jazib, you're gonna go up and do this poem. Bro, and that's real nerve wracking because you're prepared to do one poem and then you gotta do another. But that's why he made us practice in case he ever did feel like switching the order. And I'll give you the reason for that later. I think the greatest thing of all that made us a cohesive team, however, is the fact that we had fun. Like, 
a lot of fun. You know, we would laugh together. We'd like listen to music and sing and dance together, stuff like that. I mean, uh, sometimes RJ would host like dinners at his place and we would like eat with them. He'd cook for us and stuff. Like we were just a really loving family. I don't know, we just had a lot of fun. Okay, so y'all have probably been wondering, okay, what was the actual competition like? I'm getting to it, I'm getting to it. But first, let me actually explain the format of Cupsy so it'll provide context for what I'm about to say. The format of Cupsy was pretty much like this. Teams compete against each other in bouts consisting of four rounds of poetry in which each team sends one poem. The first two days of the tournament are preliminary bouts, and the rankings from these determine which teams advance onto semifinals. The scores in semifinals determine who makes final stage. Judges are chosen at random from the audience. The five judges had to be audience members who did not know any of the poets performing. All right, and this was a particularly important thing when it came to the UH Kook Slam performers because the competition was being hosted at UH which means chances are a lot of the audience might know us at least as acquaintances. So we had to make extra sure that the judges did not have any idea who we were. Scores range from zero to 10. Out of the five scores, the highest score and the lowest score would end up being deducted so that your total score would be the sum of the three middle scores, which means the highest you could get was a 30. And as I said before, you get point deductions the further you go past three minutes and 10 seconds, which was the time limit for any poem. Oh, and I guess one important thing to keep in mind is that poems used in the first preliminary bout couldn't be used in the second preliminary bout. Also, poems used in the semifinals couldn't be used in the finals, but poems used in the preliminary bouts could be used in the finals. I know it's weird, but uh, whatever, those were the rules. Okay, so here is the Cupsy game plan we had come up with for the days of the competition, all right? For starters, no dairy on the days of the competition. That makes sense. Dairy tends to mess with your vocal cords. We weren't trying to have any accidents or mistakes. Uh, also, drink lots of water. You got to stay hydrated. And also, use the restroom before each bout. Very important. Be friendly and kind to the competition. We're trying to be good sportsmen and also good hosts because at the end of the day, it's UH that is hosting the competition. We're not trying to make our school look bad, you know? But at the same time, no flirting you can be kind and friendly but no flirting that's something that rj really insisted and you know that makes sense we're not trying to have any drama we didn't want any of that uh, we would do vocal breath and facial warm-ups uh leading up to each bout to make sure that like we were loose and comfortable in our own bodies we came to each bout color coordinated and this is something i thought was just so raw like we was looking real fly you know what i'm saying like if you look at some of the pictures some of the videos in which we perform like we weren't looking that bad, you feel me? Yeah, now we were looking good. We practiced a lot of the poems we had scheduled for each bout before the bout began. RJ would actually pray with us as a group before each bout. That kind of helped calm our nerves. Jackson would actually play ninja with us sometimes. Helped us, you know, be uh, relaxed, you know, and chill. Like, you know, at, this is a competition, sure, but at the end of the day, we're supposed to have fun. RJ and Jackson had our hardest hitting poems sort of spread out among the bouts, specifically because like I said, poems used in certain bouts can't be used in others, you know? So uh, we wanted to make sure that we had a good array of like really strong poems that we could use when the going got tough. Jackson was always in the crowd keeping time. He would give us a signal when two minutes and 45 seconds hit, three minutes hit, and he'd pretty much be like, round it up at like three minutes, five seconds, you know, cause we're not trying to get that time penalty. We also made sure to stay silent at the mic and not do any unnecessary movements prior to actually beginning our poem because the moment you make a sound or do any form of choreography, that's when the timekeeper starts recording your time. And you don't wanna do that because then you might go over time even though you only performed your poem for less than three minutes and 10 seconds, you know? If another team performed a poem that was too similar to the one we were planning on using right after, or if it was a, a hard counter to whatever we had planned, that's where RJ would be like, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. He and Jackson would decide on a poem for us to do instead of what we had planned to make sure that no matter what, no one else's poem was going to negatively affect our scores. And sure enough, we made it to final stage. You know, we were among the top four out of all 58 teams that had attended the competition. And let me tell you, the poems were stacked. Like, I literally do not know if any poem on final stage got less than a 29 out of 30. Like, every poem was dang near perfect scores. It was, oh my God, bro. 
it was so hard. We did our best and barely, barely missed third place by like a fraction of a point. It was, it was nuts. And at the end of the day, Penn State University, congrats to y'all, y'all killed it. Like they ended up getting first place. I was a surprise. They were mind blowing. Every single team that performed at Cupsy, honestly, was mind blowing. Of course, did we want first? Duh, duh. But like, we were so honored that we even got that considering how grand the competition was. And like that, that placing is not something we take for granted at all. It's not something we complain about at all. It was a privilege, honestly, performing in a setting with that much talent. So yeah, that's my story. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Deuces.